What's up, y'all? Welcome to the Chess Giant. This is Solomon Rodell. In today's video, I'm covering round five, my fifth game in the recent tournament, the 27th Annual Pacific Coast Open, the premier section held in Los Angeles, California. Now, up to this point, I'm two out of four. I just dropped game four, so I have two wins and two losses. And here I'm playing as black against a strong expert level player, Krishna Nathan, who is rated at 2166. He starts this thing off with a D4. And I mean, okay, at this point, I played four straight hippopotamus defense games. Why stop now? I continue with g6, allowing white to just take full control of the center, which he does. In which case, okay, we have bishop g7, d6. And now against bishop c4, guys, most of the time in the hippo, we could care less about what the opponent plays, right? They can play e4. Uh, they can play the birds, d4, the English opening, the dunst opening, the king's Indian. We don't care. We're just going to play the same thing every time. However, in this particular situation, when you see a pawn on e4, a knight on f3, and a bishop on c4. Be very careful not to play this move of knight d7 before e6. The reason for this is that white here has bishop takes f7 with check. Whole idea being, I mean, if we play king f8, we just play king f8. And if we take this bishop off the board, white is able to play knight g5 with check. Notice now, if we play a move like king f8, knight e6 comes into the action. Notice again, guys, this knight on d7 was bad because it really locks our position up. And this bishop really doesn't defend that square on e6, right? I mean, if we play king f8, knight e6, we lose our queen by a fork. And if we play king e8, knight e6 comes on the board and our queen cannot even move. And finally, I mean, okay, we could play something like king f6, trying to hold on to that square. And we have, but all of a sudden we just lose this game in a single turn. So, okay, I mean, going back to bishop c4, one of my rules of thumb is whenever I see a move like bishop c4, lock that bishop down right away, or at least in the next couple moves, with e6. You could say the same thing if white plays a move here like bishop f4, right? Lock that bishop down, make it so that the bishops have no activity and no sacrificial ideas, especially on the square of f7. In this case, we see bishop e3. Uh, Krishna just dropping that bishop back. And I respond just by playing knight e7 and then continuing with b6, h6, bishop b7, putting some pressure on that centralized pawn at e4. And finally, against rook e1, we have knight d7 and a6. So we've reached our hippo setup. I mean, we have two knights tucked behind our centralized pawns on e6 and d6. We finch headed both of our bishops, and we have our pawns on a6 and a6 as well. Here white continues with knight bd2, and I decide to expand in the center of the board with e5. Whole idea being, I mean, if you know, white wants to take on e5, I'll simply take back with the pawn. And here, after the move of bishop g3, I decided to castle kingside. One quick thing about the hippo, guys, make sure that you're never outmanned in the center in terms of pawn structure. What do I mean? Well, guys, here, don't play a move such as e takes d4, because all of a sudden, white just captures back, and we have one centralized pawn versus two, right? And I mean, why would you play the hippo? Why would you play very slow chess just to trade off in the center of the board like this? All of a sudden, white has a very comfortable game. They're, they're really wiping out half of the fifth rank. And, uh, you know, I think it's black here that's going to be backpedaling a little bit. So, okay, I mean, after this move, bishop g3, I got to stay strong here. I don't take on d4. I simply decide to castle kingside. Again, as always, if you want to take on e5, we will take back. And in that case, it's going to be 1 to 1 instead of 2 to 1 in the center. And here we see this move from white of queen e2, in which case I play knight c6. Now, many people are wondering, wait, why doesn't white here just play a move like d5? Well, I actually wanted white to do this because, sure, this knight goes right back to e7, uh, or my apologies, going back to d5. My knight goes right back to e7 in almost, you know, uh, Bogo Indian type fashion. But, guys, this is on purpose because all of a sudden white has spent all this time playing aggressive chess, e4, pushing their pawn all the way down to d5, this bishop on b3. White's been trying to get an active game, but all of a sudden it's black who's the one with all the leverage. I mean, I have ideas here like knight c5, attacking the bishop on b3. And really here, I have this idea now of f5 at any given point, uh, putting some pressure on, on e4, which is a key pawn, really defending d5. And more importantly, I mean, I'm looking at ideas such as f4 as well. So really f5, king's Indian defense type attack here, and a very solid game for black. So here following the move of knight c6, my opponent was smart not to play the move of d5, giving me all the leverage in this position and all the counterplay and attacking chances, but instead simply takes on e5, in which case I take back with the d-pawn. And now against rook a d1, okay, I mean, you know, by playing this move of knight c6, it does defend the square of e5, but it also gives my queen some breathing room. So, okay, I mean, let's just play this move of queen e7, connect our rooks. And now we see why I play this move of bishop d5. Um, I was expecting this in the game, you know, just pinning my knight to the bishop. Here I responded by playing knight d8 attacking the bishop on d5, eyeing a square like e6 for my knight, eyeing potential c6 ideas 
with my pawn. I mean, here, if white, for example, played a move like knight c4, I could play c6 and try to trap that bishop uh, on d5. But here we see white just continue by snatching up the bishop, in which case I take back with the knight. And now against knight c4, you could actually argue here that I should play a move like h5. Guys, oftentimes the opponent doesn't play a move like h4 against the hippo, but I actually think that it's extremely effective in a position like this. And the reason for that is that white always has h5 ideas available, making this pawn move and making my light squares weak. I think here I got to play a move like h5, but instead I continue with b5 followed by c6. And sure, I am trying to solidify the pawn structure on the queen side, but I should have just waited a single move and played h5 because here white all of a sudden plays h5 themselves. And again, I don't need to move this pawn, but if I do, these light squares, especially f5, is going to be extremely weak. I mean, you know, I think a lot of players here are like, wait, they just gave me a pawn, let me take it right off the board. Guys, sometimes we got to assess, okay, is a pawn worth it? In this case, it's definitely not, because white just plays this move of knight f5, attacking the queen on e7. Guys, this queen you know, only has so many options here. And really guys, this knight on f5 isn't going anywhere anytime soon. It's gonna take four moves for my knight on d7 to even think about taking this off the board. And if I play a move here, such as queen e6, white can play knight three to h4, attacking the pawn on h5. And, uh, you know, blocks just some big, big trouble here. On top of that, if this knight ever moves on b7, white has rook d6 ideas in the air. So, I mean, okay, after this move of h5, guys, I just couldn't take off this pawn. It's just it's just simply not an option. You might as well just resign at this point if you do that. So I continue with the move of knight bc5. I'm trying to solidify my, my position here, defend the knight on d7. My opponent continues by taking off the pawn on g6 and then playing knight h4. Again, I cannot move this pawn. It's just a death sentence. It gives white all the activity in this position. In this case, if I do play g5, knight c6 comes in the air, attacking my queen and my rook. And I mean, okay, what are we doing? So I play this move of king h7, in which case white continues to add the pressure with queen g4. Notice here, I cannot play a move like queen e6. I really wanted to play a move like this, just trying to trade down queens. I mean, I'm the one being attacked here. I'm the one who's trying to hold on. Why not trade off queens? Well, the reason for this is that white can simply just take it off. And sure, I can take back, but all of a sudden, this knight on d7 is no longer defended. And white simply goes up a piece with a rook on the seventh rank. This is disastrous. So following queen g4, I really got to defend the pawn on g6. I can't try to trade down. I can't try to push the pawn. Well, how can I defend it, right? There's really two options here. One of them is rook f6, and the other one is queen e8. Rook f6 is definitely playable, but I thought that queen e8 looked a little bit more natural and gave me some more options. I mean, here I really wanted to play this move of uh, knight f6, attacking the queen, and also winning the centralized pawn on e4, right? I mean, if it was my move here, I would play knight f6, make this queen run away somewhere, and then all of a sudden just snatch off that pawn on e4, and we're going to be in business. So my opponent here continues, Krishna continues, with f3 trying to hold this position together and against this i now play rook d8 right um i, I continue with rook d8 uh defending uh, you know even this knight more on d7 and just keeping knight f6 options available here he continues with rook d6 and i think that this was you know uh, maybe a slight mistake because now i'm able to play this move of uh of rook f6 simply you know defending the pawn on g6 and offering up a trade here he decides to uh you know to take uh or sorry to defend the rook on d6 with rook e d1 but in this case i simply snatch it off and then continue with knight f8 which does two things first off it defends the pawn on g6 with a minor piece which is huge in this position and also look what i'm doing here so so here he's trying to play very aggressively he plays rook d6 he's attacking the pawn on g6 but okay i just play rook f6 I snatch off a rook. Now I'm playing knight f8, defending the pawn, and I'm really trading down a ton of material. Notice here, after he does take on d8, he really doesn't have any other, you know, practical playable options. I just play this move of queen captures back. And all of a sudden, white's attacking chances are starting to diminish. He only has four pieces left on the board, a knight pair, a queen, and a bishop. And notice, guys, this queen only has one square on the board. In fact, it can only move to h3, and that's exactly what we see in this position. But at this point, I'm like, okay, I mean, the queen can only go back to a square like g4 or back to h2, right? So I don't need to start going crazy and play something like queen d2, giving, giving, you know, giving white potential counterattacking ideas on the queen side. And uh, I go, okay, I mean, white really has no threats, some very awkward piece placement. I'm just going to play this move of knight d3 and start putting some pressure on the queen side. Here he responds by knight g4. And I then continue with queen g5. I mean, I noticed that really all his pieces are in a little uh, a little cube here. The four square cube from h3 
all the way to h4, g4, g3. So I play queen g5 and just try to make a presence on the king side. He continues now with king h2, and I continue with knight e6 with the idea of playing knight f4, attacking the queen. And now against queen d7, I continue with knight e2. Notice what I'm trying to do here. Sure, I you know I could obviously lose this knight on d3 to a move like queen takes, queen captures back. But all of a sudden we see that our knight and our queen are attacking the bishop, which is a key defender of both the knight on f2 and this knight on h4. So, okay, in this situation, I would just snatch off that bishop. And then here, I mean, I could really take either knight and have a one game, but I think queen takes f2 is definitely the better option, or at least the quicker win. And this game is just resignable for white. So following, um, going back to this move of knight e2, you can't take the knight. And notice, if you try to defend the bishop, which, again, really, I mean, this is really the only option that white has. This bishop is a key defender, holding white's entire game together, both of these very awkward knights. And if you can't defend, if you can't take the knight on d3, you gotta defend the bishop. So notice here, I mean, if a move like queen captures on d3, we win the bishop. So the big question is, okay, how can white defend the bishop? One option here is knight h1, but in that case, we simply just snatch it right off. And notice now, I mean, if you just take back all of a sudden, yet again, you did save one knight, but you didn't save both. I just play queen takes h4 with check, and yet again, white is simply losing this game. So following the move of knight e2, my opponent here playing this move of queen g4, offering a trade. I actually almost took on g4, but I took a moment and I went, okay, there's got to be something for me here. I was trying to find some crazy tactics, but I just couldn't find any. I was also looking at, you know, crazy ideas like queen c1 or something, but then I was like, why would I ever do that? Queen takes g6 to check. That would obviously just be a big mistake. I went, you know what? White, again, they're not threatening anything. This bishop can't move. The knight on h h4 can't move. And, and also, this queen can't even take my queen on g5 because if I take back, this knight on h4 is going to be trapped. So here I go. Okay, let me just start picking off pawns on the queen side. I play knight takes b2. Again, notice here, if queen takes... Uh, on g5 i take back with the pawn and this knight is about to get dropped so my opponent here following knight takes pawn um just continues with knight h3 in which case okay i mean i just take the queen off i take i take another pawn so now i'm up two pawns three pawns here white tries to attack my pawn on e5 so okay let's hold it down and finally when they have too many attacking pieces on it i'm like okay you can have the pawn i'm going to try to get your pawn on e4 we now see this move of bishop e1 in which case for a brief moment i go up four pawns in the position but he's now able to play knight b4, winning one of these pawns back. Now, here I just continue with a5, followed by b4. I think that this was a little bit harder of an angle. I mean, if I play this move of a4, white can play a move like knight b4 and prevent this pawn from promotion, at least right away. But if I play b4, I mean, guys, b3 is a huge, huge threat. And this bishop can't really get into the action trying to defend it. So after this move of b4... He plays the option of uh, just sacking off a minor piece to get rid of my past pawns. And against this, I mean, okay, let's play knight e3. This pawn on g4 is extremely vulnerable to attack. He continues with g5, but in this case, I'm simply able to capture it with the knight, take back with the h pawn, and at this point, I'm just simply winning, right? I mean, I play knight d5, kick the bishop back, bishop f6. Here, you know, I could I could easily play moves like e3 or knight f4 with check, but I'm like, okay, let me just get my king active, play simple chess here, king f7. Uh, bring this king into the action. Then I'll play a move like knight f4 with check. Bishop e5 directly aimed at the opponent's king. And here against king h1, I played knight d3. Notice how this bishop has nowhere to go without getting captured. So here he resigned the game. So guys, up to this point in the tournament, I'm now three out of five with the hippo. A very, you know, in my opinion, a very underrated opening. My goal is to try to hit national master, try to hit 2200 by playing nothing but the hippopotamus defense. Let me know what you guys thought of this video. I mean, we have a lot of content out. Um, check out uh, the playlist above if you're trying to learn more about chess openings. Check the playlist below if you want to see my top 10 chess openings for black um, against the move of d4. The hippo is not included. I went with more mainstream lines. But as always, I appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching and uh, wishing you all a great day. Peace.